based on the actual experiences of American clergymen, pastor, priest, or rabbi. The men who give inspiration and guidance to people at the crossroads of life. World War I was over. Back from French battlefields came our soldiers. The soldiers who had fought with guns, and the soldiers who had fought with their courage and their faith, which they called salvation. These soldiers were ministers of the Salvation Army and dedicated to do God's work, not only in their churches, but wherever they found the need. Even on a street corner. This is the story of Captain Harry Purdom, Minister of the Salvation Army. Death to us part, Katie. gathered here on this street tonight to... To make too much noise! Go home! God bless you, sir. Would you care to join us in worship? Join you? Let us begin with prayer. Dear Lord, we ask for your blessing on this humble service. Carry our words to the ears of the sinners. Bless our music and testimony. Amen. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the water? Give me a bottle of soda, Bob. Yeah, all that singing and praying and for what? You're listening. Not me, Fender. I'm strictly for laughs. All that religious stuff is for the shoe clerks. Sure. <laughs> Maybe that's why they're clerks. Instead of hoodlums. Hey, is that a crack at me? That's a crack at anybody who don't obey the law. Prohibition ain't a law, it's a racket. Well, it's the law around here. And the sooner you take your lousy business some other place, the better I like it. Mr. Fender! Will you please tell me why you permit that carnival outside? Carnival? Oh, no, sir. That's a religious service, the Salvation Army. I know what it is. There's nothing wrong with my hearing except that it's being subjected to entirely too much noise. I want it stopped. But, Mr. Davis... No, run him off. I have no authority. Get some. Get the police. Have them arrested for disturbing the peace. I've got enough on my mind without having to listen to that. What's the matter with him? Nervous, I guess. First time he's been out of his room since he checked in two days ago. Maybe he's hiding out. Maybe he's a killer. You've been going to those moving pictures again. Haven't you got something to do? God is always with us. Ready to help as soon as we are ready to help ourselves. If we accept God, we will find that he is our ally. And that we will never, never be alone. Mrs. Purdom, I wanted to warn you. Officer Jensen will be here in a few minutes. Let us say you aren't around, there won't be anyone here for him to arrest. Well, we'll still be here, Mr. Pender. And my place we can see All right, break it up. The show's over. Go on home. Cap, why don't you stop fighting City Hall? Do you have a church? Hold your services there. We do, Mike. But the people who go to church don't always need it the most. We want to reach the people who have no churches. That's so wrong. It's wrong enough to get you tossed into jail. Come on. I'm sorry, Mike, that we're the cause of so much trouble for you. That's what gets me. No matter how much I push you around and you land in jail, you say you're sorry you caused me trouble. 
We know that you're only following orders. Orders, yeah. Orders to bring in the criminal or shoot it out with some punk that's up to his ears in happy dust? That I understand. It's a cop's job. But not this. Let's go. about that? Six straight passes. Great. I'll shoot you for the drinks. Hey, hey, get back to your work. Games come later. Mr. Pender. Look, I must have had a call by now. I told you to wake me no matter what time. Mr. Davis, there's been no call. When a call comes in for you, I'll ring your room. Now relax. Are you sure? I'm sure. Hey, what goes with the trance? That guy. Expensive clothes. He's got money. And he's got trouble. If we could find out what's on his mind, we might be able to figure an angle to tap him. Uh, I don't know. Looks to me like a guy who gives trouble. Ah. Okay, Mr. Davis. Two packs of cigarettes coming up. Jack. Jack. Where's that loafer hiding? I'll take him up to him. You? Well, all right. Room nine. I know, I know. And be sure he gets both of them. Did you call me? I'm always calling you, but I can never find you. Someday I'm going to hang this bell on your neck. Who is it? Me, Sloan, from downstairs. I got your cigarettes, Mr. Davis. There you are, sir. Two packs. Thanks. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mr. Davis. Anything else you need? No. Nothing. Good night. Anything at all. Stranger sometimes has a hard time finding what he wants. Just what do you think I want to find? Well, that's up to you. If it's action you want, I know of a straight dice game. Or if you're a little lonely. Why, you cheap little... Go on, get out. Leave me alone. Change your mind. Get out. Now tell yourself for the rest of the night just how lucky you are that I didn't break your arm. Hello, operator. It'll be Lakeside, 4916. That's right, 4916. And hurry, please. Counter investigations? Mr. Davis calling. Hello? Yes? Well, I've been waiting here for two days. How much longer will it take to, to locate her? Well, how do I know what name they're using? I told you his name was Cortland, Mark Cortland. And her name is Mrs. Katie... Mrs. Catherine Davis. Yes, she's my wife. Just a minute. Mr. Davis? you to wait a minute. Sorry, I didn't hear you. You mean you're nosy. Put it down and get out of here. You're wrong, mister. I'm not nosy. And I guess it's none of my business if you've got a gun in your bag. You're right, it is none of your business. I don't like trouble in my hotel. And don't make any because I don't want any either. Good enough. You know, if I was as nervous as you, I'd use a safety razor.
that's kind of a pretty song. Mr. Pender, get that policeman again. Run him off the street. Why? Why? Because I'm one of your guests. I can't stand it. My nerves are at the ragged edge. Davis, if you want them put in jail, I suggest you call the police. No. That's your job. Well, I'm not going to do it. You're still looking for a way to get some of my money. Why? I never try anything like that. Ten dollars apiece. Run the army off the street. Twenty. Well, that's easy money. Yeah, I'll say. Come on, this ought to be a riot. Wait, I'll get my coat. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a friend we have Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. We should never. A song, a memory, a dugout in the last war, a Salvation Army girl singing. It was the same song. What a privilege to carry everything to God. Don't have a coffee, soldier. Oh, what peace we often Go ahead, please. You Davis. K Company, aren't you? Yeah. I heard about your friend, Jimmy. He was laughing about a stomach ache just before we went on patrol. Jimmy always laughed. Just a happy, laughing kid. And they butchered him. I'm fed up with butchery. Fed up with a whole stinking mess. So here's one for the road. I'm sorry. I thought you liked Jimmy. But I... No. He was fighting for something he believed in. And if you run away, you're saying Jimmy died for nothing. No hero. Just a fool whose death had no purpose. No meaning. I don't think you want that. Just leave me alone. But I can't. You're not alone, Davis. You're never alone. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace oh. we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. And a girl. I go into your dance. We should never be disturbed. Yeah, let's see it. Take it to the Lord in prayer. More, 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 more. Friends, my testimony tonight is to tell about how the Lord gave me the personal courage to face great trouble. Oh, nobody knows the trouble I've had. On our own, none of us can overcome the evil and hateful feelings that burden us at times. I say to you from my Don't own say it, experience. Sing it. Yeah, sing it. From my own experience. Come on, sing it. I can give to Well, if you can't sing it, then go home, all of you. Beat it. I say from my own go experience. Home. Go home. Well, go home. Go home. Go home. Go home. Go home. Beat it. You fool. Stop it. That's enough. That's for the arm twisted. Go home. Okay, Preach. Come and get it. My job, Cap. Thanks, Mike. My pleasure. 
this arrest I like. Cover investigations, this is Davis calling. Look, I can't stand it here any longer waiting for your call. I've got to move to... Both. Well, why didn't you call me? Yes. I read the address. 355 Oak Street. Under the name of Harris. Yes, I've got it. Thanks. Yes, this is Mr. Harris. Who's calling? Mrs. Harris. Well, just a minute, I'll see if she's here. Someone wants you. Hello? Hello, who is this, please? There's no one there. What well, was a man? He asked for Mrs. Harris. You don't think it sounds... No, 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 don't start getting any silly ideas. It was probably just a salesman. I tell you, I don't like this, Mark. That that man from the gas company this morning, there, there was something awfully phony about him. It's just your nerves, honey. His reaction from a... Why don't you go ahead and say it? Reaction from a guilty conscience. Look, I'll tell you what, let's go out to dinner. How about that little restaurant with a good ravioli? Come on, do you good to get out of the house? Mr. Pender, will you look after this bag for me? Oh, checking out, eh? Yes. This should take care of everything. Wait a minute. How long do you want me to hold this? Read tomorrow's paper for further instructions. Sorry. It's all right. Look, I'm I'm sorry about those hoodlums and everything. I'm sorry for you. It must be a very heavy burden you're carrying. We're going to our church right now. Why don't you come with us? Look, leave me alone, will you? I can't do that. You're not alone. You're never alone. What? What did you say? You're never alone. You're never alone. You're never alone. Are you sure you saw a gun in the bag? Of course I'm sure. Then there was that phone call. Five minutes later, he's ready to check out. Why should he leave his bag here? I don't think he ever intends to come back for it. I think he's going to do something like, like suicide or murder, maybe. Well, in that case, he'd have the gun with him. The other hand, if it's in the bag, what have we got to worry about? <clears throat> well, well, you're the cop. Chance to draw the gun still inside. What are the chances now? Could be police headquarters. <laughs> I feel much better now, Mark. We ought to dine out more often. We'll do that. I could have sworn I left the porch lights on. You probably need a fuse. Who's that? Carl! Yes, Katie, it's me. Look out, he's got a gun. Now, Carl! What did you expect? Flowers? After all, I have some rights. Not to give up, Davis. I'm talking to my wife. At least she was my wife. 
gave you my name, and look what you've done to it. Carl, please. Why did you cry when I was hurt? When you sad about me? Carl, please, look. I know I hurt you, but... but you don't want to be hurt in return, do you? You always were a selfish girl, Katie. Always wanting something and never wanting to pay for it. Carl, please. Please leave me alone. Alone? We're never alone, Katie. But you don't understand that, do you? Someone spoke to me tonight. It was like a dream repeating itself. The same words. We're not alone. We're never alone. Sitting here waiting for you, I had time to think what those words really mean. There's someone bigger than us, Katie. Someone we've both forgotten. But I intend to try and find him again. And with his help, I can forget you. I can forgive you. I can even feel terribly sorry for you. Sorry? You should have pulled the trigger. That would have been easy. Don't worry, Carl. I'll be punished. Punished for the rest of my life. Remember it. Yes, Katie, you will. I wish I could help you. Goodbye. Still no luck. He's disappeared completely. Wish I could help. I don't even know what direction he took. The last I saw of him, he was talking to Mrs. Purdom. You mean the Salvation Army woman? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me that before? Well, it's late, but maybe not too late. I won't need this, Captain. Not now. This evening I started out to kill. Instead, I'm going home now, free. Free of all that sick hate I've lived with all these months. I don't know how to thank you. Don't try. You owe your thanks to someone else. Yes, I know that now. Goodbye, Captain. Mrs. Purdom. Oh, you can keep that. Sell it. Maybe the money it'll bring will help you in your work a little. I'd like that. Goodbye, Mr. Davis. God go with you. Service is... Uh... Late tonight, huh? A little. But it was worth it, Mike. It was worth it. Yeah, I heard it. I heard it all. Look, it just happens that I have a corner on my feet that I can't get around to between seven and eight. In fact, I probably would be too busy to get there even if I did get a complaint. <laughs> Carter six and Carter. Good night. Good night. Stories for Crossroads are selected by our Board of Advisors, Captain Maurice M. Witherspoon, Father George B. Ford, and Dr. William F. Rosenblum.